Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's hey! a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. You're 14 years old. Yeah, you knew very well my age. You know exactly, you know, who he was hanging out with, you know. I don't think he cared. When a rose turned 15, she says things took a turn. You know, just take your underwear off and get on top. And I said I didn't want to. And he, um, you know, very forcefully um, kind of brought me into the table and uh, I just did what, I was, what he told me to do. I was really scared. I didn't necessarily think that he was, you know, going to rape me. Did he hold you there? Yeah, he, mm -hmm. No question in your mind, he knew you did not want that to happen. Oh yeah, no, he definitely, yeah, there was no way I was like, I don't want to say I was screaming or anything of that nature, um, but I was terrified and I was telling him to stop, please stop, you know? And did he? No, he did not stop. He had no intentions of stopping and that's what he wanted, that's what he got. When you left there, you never went back? I, after that day, no, I never went back. I was terrified. I was really scared because I didn't... I want that to happen again. And you left school. Did you leave the school because it was in the same neighborhood? Yeah, it was, it was so close. Oh, my God. There's another girl. Um, her name is uh, Jennifer Arizoza, and she is very brave, and she has now come forward uh, to allege that Jeffrey Epstein raped her when she was 14. Um, you know, the Miami Herald had uh, uncovered about 80 girls, 80, uh, and this was a three-time-a-day thing for Jeffrey Epstein. This was um, an endless, endless, endless supply of 14-year-olds being delivered to him in various locales. I mean, this is global. This happened uh, all over the place. It happened in New York. It happened in New Mexico. It happened in Florida. It happened in the Virgin Islands. Uh, it happened, uh, 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 you know, in Europe. I mean, this this is an international uh, a ring of uh, uh, human trafficking of underage, uh, underage, of, 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 uh, it's pedophilia is what it is. It's a rich guy buying, uh, you know, uh, uh, kids, little kids, girl kids. So you know the story pretty much. Now today, Alex Acosta decided that he was going to have a press conference today at around 2.30 Eastern time, which he did. And uh, he took questions. And he was asked, why in the world did you let this guy plead to one count of, and, and the, the charge itself is insulting to these girls. I, can I just say to you that um, there is no such thing as child prostitution. It doesn't exist in law or in any decent person's head. If a child is below the age of consent for sex, that child cannot prostitute him or herself, his or herself, cannot. Somebody is pimping them. Somebody is delivering them. Somebody is working them. Somebody is managing them. Somebody is running a human trafficking sex ring for a pedophile, for a pedophile. That is what it is. And that they actually, that Acosta actually allowed. Now, I know how Acosta got the case. I know exactly, I know exactly the story. And I'm going to tell it to you because the story is disgusting and it's shocking. You know why? Because in this story, there were really only two people who were willing to risk their careers to defend the victims of a pedophile's sex ring. There were really only two people who were willing to risk their careers. And those two people were the Palm Beach police chief, Michael Ryder, and a detective named Joseph Reckery. Those are the only two men in Palm Beach 
who were willing to risk their careers. They're the ones who investigated Jeffrey Epstein in the first place. They're the ones that went through Jeffrey Epstein's garbage. They're the ones that did uh, the entire uh, investigation and the ones that gathered all this evidence. They're the ones that caused affidavits to be uh, uh, written up. They're the ones that did it. And they handed this off to the state prosecutor who is a Democrat in good stead, in good standing, okay? This guy is a Democrat. People here in Palm Beach know his name. The police chief and the detective handed all their evidence off to a guy named Barry Krischer, the state attorney for the state of Florida. And Barry Krischer, who is now retired and in private practice, I, I think he even retired from his private practice now, according to the police officers who were willing, who were willing to prosecute a very rich and powerful man with friends like Prince Andrew and President Bill Clinton and W and uh, uh, you, and, and Donald Trump and other rich guys on Palm Beach. God only, you know, like every billionaire that lives on Palm Beach, they all knew Epstein. So what Trump told you yesterday, well, you were nobody on Palm Beach if you didn't know Jeffrey Epstein, right? Okay, so everybody knew this was what they call an open secret, but it wasn't really a secret at all. Everyone had seen, everyone knew. So the police chief said that it became apparent to him that the evidence that he was giving to our Democratic state attorney, Barry Krischer, was being leaked to Epstein's team of lawyers, to his legal team. And it's just so fascinating. They all came from, uh, well, not all of them, but uh, the lead lawyer, Lefkowitz, came from same place that Bill Barr came from, same place that Acosta came from. They all worked at uh, Kirkland and Ellis. And this is where we're getting these dingbat judges from, too. This is where we're getting all of these uh, people, all these dingbats that Mitch McConnell is, uh, you know, uh, uh, stacking our court system with. All Kirkland, I mean, it's just so unbelievable. So... What the police chief and the, and the detective uh, did, they drew up probable cause affidavits and they charged Epstein and two of his ass assistants, uh, one with a, a, one a recruiter, with sex-related crimes. And they gave this um, probable cause affidavit to our state attorney, Barry Krischer. And instead of Barry Krischer filing the case, uh, he decided he would go the grand jury route. Why? Because the grand jury is a secret thing. Now we all, thank God, you know, we all know about grand juries now. We all know about Mueller's grand jury and can't release the testimony. It's all so secret. And a grand jury only hears what the prosecutor, in this case, the state attorney, Barry Krischer, presents to them. There's no defense attorney. There's no nothing in there. It's just the, the jurors and the prosecutor presenting a case. Well, Barry Krischer chose to present the grand jury with one girl. One girl testified at that grand jury and nothing else, none of the other evidence. There were dozens and dozens of girls that the police chief in Palm Beach County, uh, Chief Michael Ryder and Detective uh, Joseph Reckery had ready to testify to whoever uh, in whatever proceeding. And Barry Krischer decided he'd go the grand jury route, keep the whole thing a secret and introduce just one witness. And uh, the police chief, Ryder, understood at that point that Barry Krischer was compromised by somebody much higher up than him. And the police chief alerted the FBI. When the FBI got involved, the police chief here called the FBI. And when the FBI got involved, it became a federal complaint, as it should be because it was cross, li uh, cross state lines anyway. And that's how the U.S. attorney got the case from the FBI. That's how Acosta, who was the U.S. attorney appointed by W and sent down to Miami, got the case. And guess what Acosta did? Acosta met with Epstein's attorneys and let them write a plea deal. They filed everything in Miami, not in Palm Beach, where the girls would have been notified. They filed everything in, Palm, in, in Miami and the girls heard about it on the TV. Go to RadioRights.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.